So Google's AI overviews are extremely disruptive to the SEO industry and you need to change your strategy today. And in this video, I'll show you exactly what you need to do to survive and thrive in this new AI world. I'm Nathan Gotch, an SEO professional and digital marketer with over a decade of experience leading hundreds of successful SEO campaigns. So here's what's happening right now. Number one, Google has begun rolling out AI overviews for about 7% of search results. And I've tested this myself and found that 99% of keywords that trigger an overview have informational intent, like what is minimum wage in Missouri, how to quickly ripen an avocado, and is foil non-stick. But I haven't seen overviews for e-commerce keywords like Hawaiian Lays or tree toppers, or affiliate-driven keywords like best air fryer, best whitening toothpaste, or best protein powder. It also isn't triggering on any local searches right now. Number two, almost 37% of Google searches end without clicking on any Google search results. Now this trend will continue because of AI overviews. However, many other SERP features cause this outcome. Number three, chatbots like ChatGPT and Perplexity are getting better. And many people like myself use large language models instead of Google searches. In fact, I use ChatGPT far more than Google for various tasks throughout my day. And Perplexity is also picking up steam and Apple has joined the AI party as well. It feels like a whirlwind of change right now. But that's because most of us are in it and are living in an echo chamber. The data tells a different story because Google still owns over 90% of the search market share, is the most popular website online, and SEO is the most in-demand digital marketing channel. So despite these three big challenges, SEO is still one of the best marketing strategies for increasing organic traffic leads and customers. However, you must adapt and pivot your strategy to mitigate risk and continue to grow. So here's what I recommend. Number one, prioritize conversions. So before you even think about doing SEO, the first thing you have to do is you have to optimize your website for conversions. And there's a few reasons for this. Number one is we don't wanna just work super hard on our SEO campaign and send all this beautiful, relevant traffic that's ready to convert, and then it lands on a website that just is not built for conversions in the right way. And number two, According to Google's recent antitrust case, we know for sure now, and this has been speculation for many, many years, that Google uses Chrome data to inform Google search. So you can go and you know, Google this and, and learn more about it, but the point is, is that Google uses the user signals that are occurring here on Google Chrome to ultimately inform search, which then can affect your rankings indirectly. So if someone lands on this site and they don't go to a second page, they don't scroll, they don't call a phone number, they don't submit a lead form, they don't do any type of action on the site, then it's likely going to impact your rankings, okay? so. You can actually measure this. You can use a tool like Mouseflow, for example. This is the one that I use. And you can you can actually use user tracking to see how people are interacting with every page on your website. So this is really important for conversions. You can also go into Google Analytics 4 and you can see the events inside of Google Analytics 4. You can see the engagement rate. So we have data at our disposal to ultimately build a, a website that's built to convert. So this is something that has to get squared away first before you even think about pouring gasoline on the fire with SEO. Now the question is, well, you know, what are we looking at here? So I picked a random business for movers in St. Louis, Missouri. So that's the keyword that I was looking at and I just picked a random business. Uh, and I just wanna show a couple of ways that we could improve a site like this to drive more conversions, okay? So very, very simple fixes that could make a significant difference. So number one, you know, good to have a call to action above the fold. This is the right idea, but the problem is this phone number is not clickable. So if someone's on mobile, they're not gonna be able to call this phone number and just by clicking on it. They're gonna have to actually either try to remember the phone number or they're gonna have to open up two different windows and try to go back and forth to type in that number. So that much friction is going to kill conversions in this case, okay? So, and especially depend, it, it's very contextual with the type of business that you have, but for like a moving business, the person, the, the company that's probably gonna win in this scenario is whoever responds the fastest. Uh, to to an inquiry or who gets the lead first. And so it's really critical that you're not missing out on these types of conversions. Okay, so that's the first part. So make this clickable. 
Number two is remove the social media icons above the fold, okay? This is not gonna drive conversions. All it's gonna do is distract and it's going to cause a disruption in that conversion cycle and it's gonna send people off of the website. So I block all these sites, so I can't really go and show you, but as soon as someone lands on Facebook or Instagram, it's game over. Like the, the chance of you converting them is practically zero, okay? So just remove these from above the fold. If you wanna have them, put them down in the footer, okay? And if someone wants to follow you on Facebook or Instagram, they'll find their way, but that's not the objective of a website that we're, you know, that's built for conversions, okay? So that those two things alone will make a significant difference. And then the second part of this is there's some contrast related issues. So when you're working, when you're trying to drive conversions, you want to make sure that whatever the call to action you have is can contrast well with the rest of the site or the page. So for example, right here, this is a this actually looks like a button, but it doesn't function as a button. It's really just a headline that's wrapped in this blue container. So what that does is that actually causes a lot of confusion because you'd likely see some users likely clicking on this and nothing's gonna happen, right? And then the actual CTA is the same color. So we're causing some issues here just on this little, and then I know this seems very granular, but this can cause conversion disruption, okay? So definitely not something that, that you want, okay? And the same thing down here, once again, a, a big blue bar showing you know to call and to email, but once again, you can't click on any of these. So you'd have to copy and paste it, and it's just not gonna be effective. So I would revise this whole entire uh, landing page. Okay, and we can go and look at some other ones. I'll like look at Mover St. Louis and we'll pull up someone who's ranking well. And let's see, we'll look at, you know, Two Men in a Truck, which is a huge company. But you'll see that there's certain mechanisms in place that are really built well for conversions here. Number one, they've got a beautiful clickable phone number. Number two, if you don't want to call, you can go ahead and get the quote in and you can submit a lead form. So, once again, speed is the ultimate variable here. And honestly, even their site, like I see some room to improve here, even on this site where like they should have a CTA above the fold here as well. Like have a little call to action button right here, okay? And then we go down and this is another, this is a pretty solid landing page. It's really built for SEO, but if they were gonna really be able to drive conversions better with this, it is actually good they have the sticky menu. So this is really a smart move to have a nice sticky menu so it basically follows. So at any point you can convert, but I'd probably also have a form here uh, you know, on the sidebar because this is just another opportunity to convert some additional people. Uh, and then having the blog post section, I wouldn't recommend that because you know, this is a this is a commercial intent type of keyword. So having blog posts actually kind of modifies the objective of what the searcher had when they came here, right? They came here to find a moving service or a moving company. So having this here would kind of deter them from the thing that we're trying to get them to do. So I would either add a form here to, to drive more conversions or I would ma add more uh, in content CTAs. So there's not really any in content CTAs here. There's a lot of stuff that's being discussed, but there's no additional calls to action in this content, which they should have. They should have more calls to action. Uh, and then going down here, you know, we got some, it looks like some random videos. And once again, uh, looks like some stuff for the blog. So I would just eliminate probably these, these sections unless the video is relevant to this query. So otherwise, it's just a distraction. So you know, even a site like this that's doing really well and has a really good foundation, there's still some areas that can be improved. So the point is, is just make it easier for someone to become a lead. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, and and there are some you know different variances here depending on the type of product that you sell. So like, you know, moving services they can be you know low to high ticket. It's kind of a wide range. But something that's higher ticket, you can you you can intentionally add friction. So in some cases, so like in the in the context of my business, you know, I sell a training program. There's a significant amount of friction to get into my training program. That's by design, right? Because we don't want everyone to be in the program because it's high ticket. It's a high investment. So it should be a little bit harder to get in. But you can tell. You know, as you go through this process, it's still a streamlined process. It's just that the biggest friction element that we add is our form is very comprehensive, right? It's a, it's a, there's a lot of fields intentionally to cause friction to make sure that only the best fits are going to be filling out this form, right? So different businesses require different conversion techniques, but for a business like this that's very transactional in nature, not a whole lot of branding going on. It's more just like, how do we drive conversions in the fastest way possible? So 
definitely just adding more calls to action uh, is is a is a good effort. So I would probably rebuild this whole page and try to model probably you know this top competitor here. Number two, use the reverse SEO strategy. So when you're trying to prioritize the keywords you want to go after an SEO campaign, it's best to think about going from the bottom of the funnel and then working your way up. This is the this is what I call a reverse SEO strategy. You could also call it a reverse keyword research strategy. But basically what you wanna do, especially with the new website, is you really wanna focus on the keywords where you can win the easiest, okay? So what I recommend a lot of brands do, especially SaaS SEO you know, campaigns or really just any campaign where there is some significant branding associated with it, you wanna go and secure as many assets around your brand as possible. You wanna tackle every single keyword around your brand, okay? Because this is the quickest win. You can, you can ultimately dominate the first page and get your brand fully visible just based on targeting those kind of specific branded queries. So you can tell here, like for rankability, uh, you know, there's a lot of assets here that you know we developed, right? So I have I have a review page here on Gotcha SEO that kind of talks about like the development of the product and all this stuff, right? Then I've got some other people who are uh, using the tool who have created reviews. Um, and then I have even YouTube videos that are actually targeting those specific keywords as well. And so we actually have a dedicated reviews page on rankability as well. So taking advantage of the root domain to build more relevance. And then on top of it, we even posted on LinkedIn to you know leverage the power and authority of LinkedIn to ultimately rank for this. So I'll be talking more in a second about how to blanket the SERPs, but this is just a small example. So always begin with dominating your own brand's keywords. Like if you're, if you're not even doing that, then you shouldn't even be thinking about the non-branded stuff yet. Dominate all your branded keywords. You can just go into SEMrush and just search your brand and see what's popping up. And if you have a brand new website, you can go into SEMrush and you could you know go into one like this, like for exploding topics, or maybe we could even go to like, I'll show you an example here. We'll go to a bigger brand. So let's say I was like, I was building a brand new business and I obviously didn't have any brand equity or branded searches. So we'll go, you just go to a brand, a really big brand like this and go to our positions. And then what we'll do is we'll filter it. So we just see the things that are related specifically to their brand. Okay. So now we're going to see are all the branded queries that are associated with HubSpot. And if you're in a similar business model, it's going to be the exact industry, but a similar business model, you could probably hit on a lot of these similar keywords. So HubSpot Academy, HubSpot Pricing, HubSpot Career. So just replace HubSpot with your brand. And you know there's probably some opportunity to create some content around your branded queries, okay? So just a very simple thing that you can do, but you may have to leverage another brand's uh, branded keywords to be able to identify these opportunities, okay? So speaking of the reverse the reverse SEO strategy here, so we start with our branded keywords and basically we don't stop doing that until we've completely squared that away, okay? And then once we squared that away, then we can move into more non-branded queries. Now, the non-branded queries that you go after should be directly related to what you sell. This is really important. It should be highly relevant to the thing that you sell. It should not be such a massive divide between that keyword and the thing that you sell. You shouldn't really be going after keywords like that until you've completely dominated the keywords that are a very close match to that core offer that you have, okay? So here's an example of SEO tools for agencies, a very specific type of keyword, but you'll see we specifically targeted this because of course the objective here is to rank and then of course promote our software, okay? We're gonna promote our software here. And once again, just another opportunity to build relevance and, and to rank for something that our ideal clients would likely be searching, okay? That's really what matters. So there's a lot of work to be done just in that small little bucket. And you can see, don't just stop with Google. Also, YouTube, like look, look what's going on here. And I'll explain how this is possible in a second here. But the, the, re, the biggest variable that we're using here to rank is just by tapping into NLP technology. And I'll explain you know what we do for that. But the point is, is Start at the bottom of the funnel and then work your way up and slowly just start to chip away at those keywords that are super close to your core offer. And that will put you ahead of many of your competitors that are targeting just a bunch of junk keywords that are that are designed to purely raise traffic numbers and vanity metrics, 
but are not designed to actually drive conversions. Number three, create content for organic discovery. So one of the most important things that you can do right now in SEO is not just rely on Google. Google is still by far the number one search engine. It's also the number one website as far as traffic. So it, it, you definitely need to be there. There's high demand. So it would be foolish to not be optimizing for Google, but you should also be thinking about content discovery as a whole, organic content discovery. Okay, so we want to obviously target Google as our priority, but then we also wanna start thinking about other platforms. And the, here's the good news. Once you understand how to optimize for Google, it's actually pretty easy to optimize for the other platforms as well. A lot of the same ideas apply there. It's just with uh, some different elements involved here. So number one, actually picking keywords and topics to go after, okay? So that's gonna be the same on Google and YouTube and LinkedIn and X and Threads, all of them. It's all gonna be the same thing. So you have to identify a topic that has demand and then we're gonna create content around those topics. Now, the way that we create content is definitely going to be specific to whatever the platform is that we're going after. So in the context of, of Google SEO, there's certain types of content that tends to perform well. So it, you know, an example here is long form content, works very, very well in the context of Google SEO. But when we go to YouTube, there is some similar elements here, except obviously we're creating videos instead of writing articles. And to create an engaging video requires a, a different skill set. But the one thing that you can do, and, the, and you don't see a lot of people talking about this, so this article here was, the way that I formulated this was using rankability. And I did this by using the NLP keywords to build out a highly relevant asset, okay? Now, this is what you should do. You should almost always use NLP to build out these highly relevant assets. And like, once again, I'll show you an example here. This one here, Page Optimizer Pro Alternatives. This one was built completely using rankability. And you can see within two days, it's already ranking number one. Okay, I don't know if it will stay there, but for now, it's it's number one. And that is without any link building. That is without anything else. It's just pure NLP optimization, just to show you the power of this. Um, and, and it's also the way that rankability recommends uh, the, the suggestions here, right? We're not concerned about injecting keywords. We're concerned about covering the topic in full. So big difference as far as the philosophy here. But the point is, is you use this for Google SEO, but you can also use it for YouTube SEO as well, because here's why this will work. Because YouTube is also using NLP technology to understand what each video is about. And the way that they do that is when you publish a video, it crawls the transcript, it digests, it, it takes your whole transcript from that video and pulls the NLP keywords to get an understanding of what that video is about, right? And so it's initially using that. And then once it understands what the video is about, then it pushes it out either to search or it pushes it out to browse features or whatever it may be, but it's gonna push it out to the most relevant audience as possible. Um, and so when you're working on YouTube, you should also be thinking about the SEO component. And that's why, you know, I rank for SEO tools, okay? Because I used a highly relevant script that specifically targets that keyword and I hit on all the important NLP keywords and that helps this video get visibility. But it doesn't just help get visibility in YouTube because I showed you earlier that when you do a good job of optimizing for NLP, not only do you get the Google the Google result, but you actually will rank in Google with the video. And this is not always the case, right? Just depending if there is a video pack, but if there is a video pack, it's highly likely that you will rank, okay? So once again, this is just a part of the process of we are trying to optimize for multiple locations, multiple platforms because we're trying to have an omnipresent type of approach here. So don't just focus on Google, because think about it. If I would have just focused on Google, although I am ranking well, I would have been missing out on all of this opportunity here. So instead of just having one listing, I actually have three rankings on the first page. Now, another thing to consider too, is that um, is on the Parasite SEO front, okay? So funny little thing here, if we go in here, I know that I'm not gonna be able to necessarily have a dedicated page on the site, but what I can do is I can advertise on this site. So we bought some space here 
And as a result, now we actually have another listing on the first page for this. So what we've in, you know, effectively done is we have four different channels on the first page for this one keyword. So we should be thinking more about how to blanket the SERPs across many platforms. That way we're covering as much real estate and ground as possible, okay? And this is all possible through, through focusing on building highly relevant assets on, across multiple platforms. So I would start with just you know focusing on Google, uh, you know, focusing on YouTube, those are the two biggest heavy hitters, but you can deploy these same concepts concepts to Parasite SEO, like you go and find an authoritative website, use the NLP to create a really good asset, publish it on their website so you can leverage their power uh, to get you know to get that advantage. And once again, I've I've replicated the same exact strategy across multiple keywords. Once again, SEO for dentists, you know, same thing down here in YouTube as well. Okay, so you can occupy a lot of real estate doing this. Um, and I just, you really have to change your strategy. We can't just be hyper-focused on Google. We have to think about Google, start with Google, but then think about, okay, we, we, we got our Google spot. Now let's think about how we can expand uh, the awareness here for this keyword across multiple platforms. So if you do that, you're gonna be way ahead of your competitors, okay? And the final thing I wanna tell you uh, along these lines is, remember, a lot of people these days are not just using Google, they're also using large language models, okay? So going along the lines of like, we wanna dominate search across multiple platforms, we also wanna get some visibility in these large language models. So what I'm gonna show you here is you can actually train the large language models, okay? And most of the, the models, including ChatGBT or Perplexity, uh, or really any of them, honestly, the way that they're being trained is through search. So you should, Basically, this is just a conclusion that we should begin with search, like begin with Google search and flood the SERPs with content around your brand and get other websites to write about your brand, get reviews and flood the SERPs as much as possible. Because now at this point, everything that is in Google, everything that's in Bing or other search engines is going to be a mechanism to train the large language model. So once again, going back to the original premise here, SEO should be the focal point because it is the lead domino for everything else. So definitely think about this. And remember that if you wanna get visibility in the large language models, you likely need to have visibility in Google. So just keep that in mind and don't underestimate this. The time is now to start training these, these large language models to show the types of messaging, the types of content that you want it to show. And obviously we would like it to be positive. So the more positive reviews, the more good things that are said about our brand, the better it's going to be. Number five, use intelligent link building. So although using NLP technology and creating highly relevant and original content is, is the pillar and the lead domino for SEO, you can create content all day. You can use NLP all day, but if you don't have the biggest variable, which is a strong backlink profile, then you're not gonna see the best results possible. So this is not a fair assessment when I show you rankings, like for example, showing you, you know, the rankings for this one, okay? Like this would not be possible unless I had this strong domain, okay? There are domains that are way stronger than mine, but mine is strong and I write about the same topics. There's there's link authority, there's uh, topic authority. There's a lot of good things that are working together to make this possible. And so if you wanna get results quicker, you wanna get results easier, the way to do it is you have to have a stronger website from a link profile perspective. So just looking at my site, which once again, there's way stronger websites, but just put in perspective, my site has been around for going on, you know, I guess it's been 10 years at this point, which is kind of crazy, but I have almost 5,000 referring domains, okay? I have nearly 30,000 backlinks, okay? So there's a lot of strong stuff hitting the site. And as a result, when you have a powerful website, when you publish a new piece of content, you get an automatic advantage right out of the gate compared to a brand new website. So I cannot stress this enough, you have to build your site authority. It has to be a really, really important thing. And this is why on, you know, like my, my uh, you know, SaaS business here, Rankability, I'm not even really gonna be creating any content really on rankability.com because 
Instead, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be building up the site authority. So I may create a few linkable assets so that I can leverage them to build the site authority. But the number one objective right now with this new website is to grow that site authority as much as I possibly can. So then when we start to publish new content, it's gonna start ranking a lot easier. Okay, so definitely needs to be the number one objective. Now the question is, how do we go about doing it? Well, you've got a few options. First, you can outsource it. So you can use a service like Search Intelligence. The reason why I recommend them is because they focus on getting really high quality backlinks, like those really powerful backlinks that are honestly very expensive to get on their own. Like you can go to uh, some of these, you know, these marketplaces to buy links and to get a link on like Huffington Post could be, you know, $3,000 or $4,000 sometimes, or on the New York Times, it might be three, four, sometimes $5,000 to get that link. Um, but the way that they do link building is they're focusing on creating assets. They're doing, you know, obviously having the expert contribute to a lot of these articles. So they're actually able to get these links at a much lower investment per link and you're gonna actually get a higher volume of links as well. So you're getting links from very, very strong sources. And these days, you don't wanna be getting links from mommy blogs and a bunch of blogs that you know everyone knows that they sell links. And if you can go to a marketplace and find, you know, find that opportunity to buy it, well, other people are also buying it, which means it's probably already been, uh, it's not gonna be effective anymore, right? So you really wanna focus on the links that are a little bit harder to get. Just there's a little bit more barrier to entry. And so that's the beauty of using, you know, outsourcing your link building to a service like Search Intelligence, okay? But along those lines, another thing that you can do is look at what's already successful. We can go to the indexed pages section and we're gonna be able to see all of the top pages that have attracted the most backlinks. And then from there, even if you're not in the same industry, you can take some of these concepts and make them applicable to your industry. So for example, look at the types of pages that have attracted the most links. They're pretty much all data-driven pieces of content, okay? Like there's no secrets here. Data tends to attract a lot of backlinks. So when we look at this, we say, okay, we've got a model here that works and we can take this model and we can apply it to our specific industry. So I hope that helps. SEO is obviously very different uh, than it was many years ago, and there's a lot more that we have to do to drive visibility. But at this point, lead with SEO. Like focus on Google SEO first because it is that lead domino that builds upon everything else. But then just start to layer on the different channels because if you're if you're doing well in Google and other search engines, that's going to help uh, your visibility in the large language models. And then if you're doing a good job here, you should just take what's working here and apply it on YouTube and X and LinkedIn and all the other platforms so you can leverage their authority to ultimately occupy more SERP real estate. So I hope that helps. And if, as always, you know, like this video and subscribe. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it.